be so bear with me. <laughs> That's a pretty common theme around here, man. Yeah. The sleep is a little tough. It's pa past think, my bedtime. I think Dom, when he, he just they pulled him right out of bed, like he was still like. Yeah, last week. Yeah, no, I'm. Um, same. Well, what's it to talk about? I mean, obviously, welcome back. We're we're all happy to see you again. All the fans are happy you're back. Familiar feeling, but obviously everything's completely different than it used to be, right? With with fight week, but uh, what's what's your emotion like right now, being back after this time away? Um, I'm excited. I'm focused. Um, you know, I, I have a pretty, uh, pretty intriguing opponent matchup. You know, in in, in front of me, and uh, you know, I'm just I'm excited to be here. What ultimately got you to pull the trigger? I mean, I feel like uh, along the way there may have been some questions about whether you wanted, like, whether you still had the passion or wanted to do this. So what sure. ultimately leading you in the direction to say, yeah, well, let's get back in there? Um, you know, I, I've continued to grow. Like, there's so much to learn. Um, you know, even after having done this for you know, you know, over like two decades, I'm continuing to learn and grow as a fighter, and that's um, that's what pushes me. And you know, to come out here and, and put my you know, put my skills on display, the things that I've been learning, test tested tested against other you know other dudes in the cage. That's like uh, you know that that's what intrigues me. Obviously, this past year has been crazy, man, 2020. Did the pandemic change anything in terms of, like, you either wanting to do this or you, or you I, I don't know, did it impact your life in any way that, that, that led you to this direction? No, I mean, like, I didn't, um, I've, you know, I've been, tr I've been trying to fight. Like, I was, I was supposed to fight in December of last year, um, and I had a torn retina, so I had to get that taken care of, but I was all in. You know, I, I had done a, almost a full training camp leading up to that fight. And then I couldn't fight, and I had to get that taken care of. So, um, no, I've been I've been trying to fight. It's just things are what they are, and you know, fights get booked quite a ways out. And you know, I've been on a skid. Like I'm not as you know consequential in the ratings you know, or the rankings these days. So, you know, they're not chomping at the bit to, to throw me in to to fight at the moment. So, you know, got to get a win under my belt to be, uh, you know, a, a little bit more of a hot commodity. Well, maybe not as hot in terms of the rankings, but the fan support has been pretty amazing. Mm -hmm. Have you been able to experience that a little bit? I mean, I feel like people are talking about this fight as mm -hmm. much as any fight on the card. Have you been able to suck that in a little bit? Um, well, yeah, I, there's always, you know, I have great fans. I have an awesome fan base. And um, yeah, I, I have a lot of people reaching out to me and just excited that I'm coming back. Yeah, you talk about, I mean, you're kind of a, a lifelong martial artist, right? I mean, you're enjoying to test what you're learning. But, are results imperative here, man? I mean, because you are popular, you are a legend mm -hmm. in the sport, but is it like imperative, I have to walk away with a win, or is it, let's just go in there and let's enjoy the process, let's let's feel good about what happens one way or the other? Mm, you know, there, there's a lot of different factors. I think that, you know, it's like the work that I put in, and if it was just that, if it was just me, like I could walk away, I uh, win or lose, you know, uh, eh, I don't know. I don't actually know. As it's coming out of my mouth, no, fuck <laughs> no, no, no. Like, like wins are important, right? Like, you know, like pff, on a lot of different levels. You know, financially, wins are important. Um, just in the whole scheme of things. Um, but the bigger part of that is my camp puts in time with me. My, you know, m my coaches put in work. My training partners put in work. It's not just me. You know, and so I'm kind of carrying all of their effort on my back, and so going in there and giving anything less than my 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 best, and or coming up short, that sucks because I'm kind of I feel like I'm letting everybody down. Yeah, you mentioned being intrigued by the matchup. I mean, so when they brought the name Court, did you get excited right away? I mean, a guy that's been in there for a long time as well. Did that did that fire you up? Uh, you know, it's like to be completely honest, like I'm like, you know, Court and I are pretty cool, and I was like, ah, you know. Um, is there anybody else? But then about five minutes later, I'm like, you know what? Let's fuck it. Let's go make money. Like, it doesn't matter. You know, this is this is work. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. Last for me. Give me an idea. What's what's the ideal scenario in here, man? Is it is it to walk in and throw one punch and get back in the wind column and walk out, or is it to go put on some kind of you know crazy battle that you know the fans love that they're gonna talk about for years? I mean, what's what's ideal here? What do you think, man? One punch and get out of there. I hey, that that'd be awesome. I don't know if I mean I don't know like. But yeah, I like sure. the easy way out. Sh sure. Um, <laughs> no, you want to put on the battle. No, I don't want to. I want to walk. I, I want to win. I want to. I want to get the finish one way or another. Um, but how things? I, how I think things are going to play out? I think it's going to be wild. Hey man, uh, 
John just mentioned about putting on fights that people talk about for years and years. I know you spoke about this earlier this week, but obviously the Nick Diaz fight is something that probably gets thrown at you all the time. One, two, five, Diaz and all that stuff. You mentioned you were interested in a rematch. Mm -hmm. As the winner of the first fight, why would you want to run it back? Um, it's still an intriguing matchup. Like, you know, just style-wise, he... I mean, the, fir the first time around, it was... Um, it was, uh, you know, kind of like a, a, a tactical challenge that we had to, like, he's a, he's an interesting guy to figure out. Um, so there's that. We also have the history. Um, it'd be a big fight. If you fought him again, do you think there'd be some pressure from the fans to expect you to get rid of the tactical side and just get in there and sort of trade punches in the pocket with him almost? Um, yeah, maybe. But, I mean, I'm going to fight smart. You know, I think I fought smart the first time. And, um, you know, hopefully, you know, I, there's a more, there'd be a more decisive uh, uh, outcome. Would you still throw spinning shit? Maybe. Uh, I don't know, maybe. It actually wasn't even that effective in that fight. <laughs> he just complained about it. Yeah, he just, yeah. Um, obviously, Nick's, like, social media and stuff like that for the past, I think, five years have been him in Vegas nightclubs, basically. Curious, I'm not, not don't know if you would know really but if in your opinion what's worse for a fighter taking five years off and drinking the whole time or staying in there and taking punishment to the body in fights <laughs> Prob probably getting punched in the head for five years straight and he may I mean he he was probably sparring the whole time so just because he wasn't fighting competitively didn't mean he's not getting punched so there's that one of the themes in the last few uh, interviews Dan has had is he has this quote talk with these fighters like Don Cerrone and Diego Sanchez, I'm sure you, the two guys that you've known for a long time. So when you hear Dan White saying they need to pull them back and maybe have to talk about their future, what do you think about those comments? Mm, yeah, I mean, that, I, I get it. Yeah, you know, I get it. I think, um, you know, they're, you know, they've, they've taken quite a bit of damage in, in a lot of their fights. And, um, you know, like that was mentioned to me a little while ago on another interview, like in, in regards to me, because like kind of lumping me in with them, you know, I've been on a skid. I haven't, you know, I haven't had a win in a while. Um, I guess that I would say the difference is I haven't taken, I haven't taken damage in those fights. I haven't, you know, like, or I haven't taken a whole lot of damage in those fights. Um, I, I feel like I looked good. I mean, that the last one I got caught, in, I got my arm twisted back by Chiesa, but up until that point, I was super competitive. I felt sharp. Um, a fight against Magny, you know, he edged me, but I felt, you know, I was just, he was, I, I didn't quite figure out the puzzle, but I didn't get, like, I didn't get my ass kicked. He just edged me out. Um, I don't know how many fights, I guess, I got beat by Maya pretty quick um, but you know I, as far as like going back to your question I mean I mean it makes sense if dudes are just kind of past their front prime and getting you know taking lots of damage it's something to be concerned about we spoke to Dan Hardy yesterday and he said he doesn't want to see fighters of like that era competing against like the young guys like the Jake Matthews and the Nico Prices are you still interested in competing with these young guys or do you like these fights like Court McGee with guys that have been fighting for a long time that you've that, uh, are, that, that are names and maybe not like 20 at 5, 26 in the prime of their career. Yeah. I mean, I would take it on a case-by-case -case basis, honestly. Um, you know, I don't I, – I, w I wouldn't lump myself in even – I mean, there, there's some similarities, but I wouldn't lump myself in with, with, with everybody. Like, I don't feel like I'm necessarily – like I'm not over the hill by any means. Um, I think part, part of my, you know – Part of my uh, lack of success as of you know as of late has been more uh, you know I think it's I think it's training camp I think it's having to switch stuff up and you know uh, sometimes you have a formula for what's working but things change and you have to switch it up and I have been trying to do that so you know I I think uh, I think coming out I think I think I'm going to show some. Pretty, pretty spectacular this weekend. Unrelated to you, but Dan also wants a veterans division. Mm -hmm. Super fights. What, what, what do you think of that idea? Yeah, I mean, I don't, I don't need, I don't think you necessarily need a division. I think that's what you have a, a matchmaker for, you know, right? Right. Just to make fights that make sense and, yeah. Yeah. Take on the same. 
Good. I don't know if you saw, uh, but Dan Hardy did a little uh, video with GSP, and he spoke about you know their fight in St. Peter. I don't know if you'd be interested in doing something similar while you're at it, because I know he would. Sure. Yeah, of course. Do you, do you have a list of things left to accomplish in your career? I mean, is this is this, is there like big list left that has to be done, or is this just kind of like see what comes on a, on a fight by fight basis? I'm, I'm not a big list maker, man. I'm kind of just flying by the seat of my pants and all this shit. That's like I, I'm like where the fuck am I? <laughs> like 20 years later, seriously. Isn't there something to be said that you've been doing this for so Like there can't be that many unique experiences left. But I assume flying to Abu Dhabi in a pandemic. Big lots of room for 48 hours is pretty unique. Yeah, what do you mean there's not unique experiences left? You know, I hope there's lots of unique experiences left. Um, yeah, it's different. I mean, this is that's yeah, been a it's being locked in a hotel room for a while. I mean, like, eh, whatever. I've been holed up in a hotel room for you know plenty in my life, but um, uh. It's a different story. <laughs> uh, Nearly as nice of hotels, either. Yeah, probably not. <laughs> um, but yeah, but coming out here and doing like the whole Fight Island thing is definitely it's different. I mean, it's it's like you know, like nine year old me would be super stoked about coming out to some island to fight on you know to fight somebody. Like this is this is almost like the the Jean Claude Van Damme movies, hundred percent. I feel like at this point in your career, everyone's sort of, they talk to you in this tone of, as if they're expecting you to wind it down any day now, and I know that's something you thought about before, but have you thought about, if you could script a perfect way for you to retire, to walk away, do you have an idea in your mind what that looks like? Um, I don't, but I want to go out and, you know, I want to end on a high note for sure. Like, you know, I, I, like, I don't know, I haven't won a fight since, you know, yeah, it's been a while. <laughs> 2015 it's like five years so you know it'd be nice to get get some wins and put put on some good shows and have some fun like do some spectacular shit is it is it weird though like when people talk to you like mma royalty you know what i mean like when people bring up your name it's like among the legends of the game and i know you might feel like oh i don't know if i've accomplished doing that and you, you mentioned the losses but i mean every time i hear people talk about you they talk about you with great reverence mm -hmm. i mean you do you see that? Do you feel that? And do you do you enjoy that? Um, I you know what, what's cool is like uh, watching up and coming fighters like at, at at the gym and they kind of they kind of have that. But what's what I really like about that is like I I have something to share with 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 folks like that. I see it more you know because fans are you know it, it's cool coming from fans. But what what really I don't know what really like it resonates is coming from the younger fighters. Speaking of hotels, I had to do a media tour with this guy in Albuquerque. I spend the night at a hotel. I go to pick him up and I tell him what hotel I was at. He's like, oh, that's the Haunted Mental Institute. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, what? No shit. <laughs> so that's what I think of when I think about hotels. Oh, that's great.